Hi, this is Harish Pillay, and welcome to the Wayback Podcast. So thanks, Mark, for coming on and, and talking about describing what we're going to be doing with regards to CNS and OpenShift, and in this specific instance about certification and vendor validation. So if someone is coming into the space for the first time and trying to understand what does this mean to their business and they are in the telco space, what would your first and highest advice be to them? Well, we're seeing in, in the marketplace, we're seeing a shift from virtualized network functions or VNFs to cloud native network functions or CNF, which are basically uh, containerized network functions. So a shift from virtual machines to containerized network functions. What Red Hat is announcing and has announced back in June was a new CNF certification and vendor validation program for our partners who are building CNFs that work on and interoperate with OpenShift. So what that means is from a big picture perspective is that we are encouraging telcos and uh, partners around the world to move to essentially a containerized solution for all of their telco operations with the intent of large scale scaling out as well, because uh, you know the container model helps in that kind of a technology scale out. Is that about right? That is correct. And we'll see certain functions will be better off served in a containerized format. And what we want to do is work with those partners, test their containerized or cloud native network function with OpenShift and confirm that all worked well. Our goal here is to make sure that the end user, the service provider in this instance, uh, has a seamless experience with the application workload, which is the CNF, and the underlying platform, which is on So just to take that conversation to a kind of a logical end, do you reckon that every service provider in the next five years would go into a containerized solution across the board for all of the service offerings in a telco space? I would say within a five-year period, we could safely say that 100% of service providers will have some functionality in CNF. Will they be 100% moved over to CNFs? I highly doubt that. If you look at the service provider market now, there are still physical network functions out there along with VNFs. Now you're seeing the introduction of CNFs. So my logical my logical conclusion would be that in five years, 100% will be using CNFs, but 100% will not be fully dedicated to CNFs. We're still going to see some PNFs. We're still going to see VNFs out there in use. Well, that's an interesting observation and different kinds of outputs in terms of what would be the reality. But I think that's an important observation. What is holding back? What would hold back people from fully virtualizing it instead of having physical dedicated hardware for their network operations? Well, I think they use the COTS type of uh, devices. Yeah, there may be just you know unique workloads that are more suited for physical machines or there are virtual machines right now in VNFs and they're working fine. I think where you see service providers moving to cloud native network functions or CNFs is really the versatility to provide services more quickly to their end users and to you know offer things quicker, offer things faster, offer things at a less cost. And containerized and cloud native network functions can do that. But it's not for every workload for every service provider. So there will be a gradual movement of workloads to be cloud native. Meanwhile, fully understanding and acknowledging the fact that certain VNFs and certain PNFs are fine for their current workloads right now and maybe for the future. And given the life cycle of hardware, when they get time to be replaced and refreshed and how the pace of uh, software development and the capability being incorporated into software solutions increasing dramatically, you know, I would probably, you know, posit that at some point the type of hardware needed when it gets refreshed is probably going to be fairly generic pieces of hardware that, you know, everything else is done in software. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you build a CNF or a VNF, the underlying hardware may not be able to support it. So there is a limiting factor right there, but but we are in a refresh mode. So if you refresh all your machines in 2020 or 2021, you're going to have a larger ability to adopt DNFs and to adopt CNFs. Now that's just one component. The other component is as your software development team had the the time and the resources available 
to move from a VNF type scenario to a CNF type scenario. So there's multiple factors in place. And, you know, the successful service providers will be the ones that combine hardware refresh, potentially with software refresh that's based on development cycles, roadmaps, available developer time, and so forth and so on. So it's going to be a, a nice, almost like a perfect storm that will need to be, you know, based on each individual service provider. That's what I suspect. It's going to be a kind of a, a lot of different forces pushing forward a particular worldview at, at some point. Let me just shift a little bit to the work that you have been uh, doing with Intel Labs as well, as far as this effort is concerned. Can you just give a, you know, a 30 second uh, blurb on what has happened? Yeah, exactly. No worries. Uh, what we've been working with Intel on is a physical lab based in New Mexico that is set up with OpenShift, and its sole purpose is to test the relationship of a cloud native network function interoperating with Red Hat's OpenShift container platform. What we're trying to do here is really just do the certification that we mentioned, the CNF certification and vendor validation. And at the same time, one of the things that we realized in the VNF work that we did was not all of our partners had labs to do certification. So by offering a lab that's 100% full-time and dedicated to CNF certification with Intel, we're able to bring partners in and do the work with them in a lab sponsored by Intel on the latest Intel hardware, which can support CNFs and their functionality that's needed from a hardware perspective. Oh, that's exciting because that would that, that would then probably give greater interest to more of the technology shifting into the software realm uh, rather than on the hardware realm moving forward. So the, once certification is done, is there a timeline for the validity of the certification? Or yes, is it well, uh, tied to the hardware? Well, what we do from an OpenShift perspective, well, I'll talk about software first and then hardware. In regards to OpenShift, so for example, if a, if a software partner had certified to OpenShift 4.4, let's say this month, and then OpenShift 4.5 comes out, we would look for that partner to recertify against the newer versions of OpenShift. We would also look for that partner to recertify when they have a new version of their software on the latest version of OpenShift. At the same time, if a new version of Intel hardware came out, whether it's Ice Lake or the latest versions that come out, we would also ask them to certify against the newest hardware, realizing there's a lot of new functionality there that we are going to leverage, we meaning Red Hat from a platform perspective because we work hand in hand with Intel on roadmaps. And we wanna make sure that that latest functionality that OpenShift takes advantage of via what's available from Intel that the CNF can also take advantage of. So we would most likely ask them to recertify. But once again, you know, our OpenShift releases are every three months. So really they're going to be certifying to new OpenShift releases. Just by default, there will be new Intel releases in there, which are on a slower life cycle at this point than OpenShift is. I think that's good because then there is clear uh, path in terms of how functionality capability will be uh, evolving over a period of time plus certification because i think at the end of the day you want to be able to deploy for your customers uh, certified environments that have got a certain level of sla that the customers can then be comfortable to be provided and the service provider can then honor those slas to their customers absolutely you know and red hat and intel have a 20 plus year relationship of roadmap work together so you know what we work on with intel today enhances the ability of OpenShift in future versions to leverage the capability that the Intel hardware provides, which then provides a more robust environment for our partners who are building CNF to take advantage of on top of OpenShift, on top of Intel hardware. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. If I just switch a little bit and we talk a little bit more of a future futuristic perspective, do you see us uh, as, as OpenShift evolves and gets to be certified and run on other CPU architectures that at some point, some of these kinds of uh, solutions that we are proposing uh, will also be available on, you know, just pick a, an up and coming CPU architecture, the ARM CPU, for example. Do you see that a possible second wing to the entire OpenShift and CNF portion? 
I, I think what Red Hat will do is see where the market is going. Do, uh, is, does my crystal ball say we'll support ARM tomorrow? I, I can't say that. You know, Red Hat's always been very, very good at seeing where the market is going and, and responding accordingly. You know, right now our work is focused with Intel on the lab that we have in New Mexico in regards to CNF certifications. And one of the pieces that I didn't mention previously about the lab in New Mexico is we're not just doing CNF certification. We're also going to bring in certain workloads that certain service providers want us to test interoperability on. So mm -hmm. this week we might be doing a CNF certification. Next week we might be looking at a service provider who has asked us to check the interoperability between two or three CNFs on a certain OpenShift environment. So the lab could be used in that way also. So not just for CNF certification, but for specific interoperability requests from certain service providers to make sure that these CNFs work together before they go deploy either a POC or a live environment at the service provider. Okay, that's good to know. I'm sure some of the listeners to this will probably ask this question, which is, uh, do we have additional labs being planned for in other parts of the world other than in New Mexico? Yeah, you know? there are multiple labs that Red Hat and also IBM are looking to either individually create in later 2020 and 2021 or jointly create. So we realize that these labs have great experience or great value to them, not just from the ability to augment what an ISV partner has or a CNF partner has as I mentioned with DNFs. They may not have had their own lab and that could have been a, a factor in them not doing a certification. So by having these labs available, whether it's for a certain vendor type, i.e. a CNF, whether it's for a certain workload type, let's say a RAN workload or an ETC workload, Red Hat's looking at different lab types to fulfill those certain workloads. Or it could be a lab that does interoperability testing, as I was just mentioning, right? Taking in two or three CNFs and maybe some VNFs, for example. Mm -hmm. How do they interoperate at the request of a service provider who may have five workloads, three are CNFs, but two are VNFs, right? Mm -hmm. So our goal is to create labs that have that capability to be modular enough to fit a service provider's request and let us pull those CNFs and VNFs in, let us work with OpenShift and OpenStack potentially in one lab, mm -hmm. and then take that testing and results and ship that right into the service provider's POC environment or live environment. Would these labs have the option for the you know, customers to bring their own hardware? Most likely not, as we will set them up on certified hardware that we have done work on to begin with. That being said, I, I never say never. And <laughs> depending on the opportunity, potentially someone could bring their own hardware in, but we are not at that stage at this point. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, Mark, for that you know, great conversation and, and all the topics you brought up. I think that's very good background information as well, and I hope that we'll be able to talk about this more in the future. Perfect. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark.